In this video, I want to talk about cholesterol biosynthesis. And you might not realize this, but certain cells in our bodies can biosynthesize cholesterol molecules. For example, this hepatocyte in the endoplasmic reticulum, it has enzymes that can biosynthesize cholesterol. So our cells are biosynthesizing cholesterol, which again, get into the bloodstream. And, and the pri most of the cholesterol in our bloodstream actually comes from the cholesterol we're biosynthesizing in, in our cells in the endoplasmic reticulum. So how exactly do we biosynthesize cholesterol molecules? Well, we use the carbons in acetyl-CoA. Essentially, it's the carbons in acetyl-CoA molecules which are used to biosynthesize cholesterol. So how do we take these two carbon acetyl-CoA molecules to biosynthesize large cholesterol molecules? Well, the first step is we react them together. We react these two acetyl-CoA molecules catalyzed by thiolase to create acetoacetyl-CoA. And again, this is through a simple Clayson condensation reaction. So how exactly do we do this? Well, essentially, first we deprotonate this hydrogen. When we do that, these electrons in this bond fall in the carbon. When we do that, we form this carbon anion, which can act as a nucleophile. Essentially, nucleophilically attacks this carbon. When it nucleophilically attacks this carbon, it forms a bond, and once it forms that bond, it pushes these pi electrons up on this oxygen. So when we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate. Now the electrons can scooch back down. When they fall back down, they reform that double bond. And when that happens, now this bond breaks and these electrons fall in the sulfur, forming this compound. So essentially what happened, again, it's a Clayson condensation. We form a bond and we break a bond and the electrons fall in the sulfur. Again, we form a bond and we break a bond. Just a simple Clayson condensation. And now redrawing this a little neater, now we formed our acetyl uh, acetoacetyl-CoA. Now, once we form this acetoacetyl-CoA, we essentially react it with another acetyl-CoA molecule. And now we react them, again catalyzed by this particular MJ, HMG-CoA synthase. We react these two compounds to form HMG-CoA through a simple aldol reaction. And again, if you're interested in the mechanism, we deprotonate this hydrogen. When we do that, these electrons fall on the carbon, forming this carbon anion. Now, this carbon anion can act as a nucleophile. It can nucleophilically attack this carbon, when it does that, it forms a bond, and once it forms that bond, it pushes these pi electrons up on this oxygen, forming this compound, this tetrahedral intermediate. Now we know this oxygen anion is fairly basic, so essentially it can get protonated, forming this compound, and now we have this structure. Now what happens is a water molecule comes around and essentially goes through a hydrolysis reaction where essentially we nucleophilically attack, forming a bond. When we do that, we push these pi electrons up, up, up on the oxygen. The electrons scooch back down, reforming that double bond. Then this bond breaks and these electrons fall on the sulfur. But essentially what happens is we form a bond and we break a bond. These electrons fall on the sulfur, forming this compound. So now we have this compound and drawing it neater. Now we have this HMG-CoA. So this HMG-CoA has a choice. It can enter different pathways. For example, it can either it be used to biosynthesize cholesterol molecules. So we can either use this HMG-CoA to biosynthesize cholesterol, or we can use this HMG-CoA to biosynthesize keto acids through ketogenesis. So what determines which pathway we go through? Well, it's hormones. If insulin is around, it activates this enzyme and we biosynthesize cholesterol. However, if glucagon is around, it activates this enzyme and we biosynthesize keto acids. But in this video, we're talking about cholesterol. So let's say insulin is around and we biosynthesize cholesterol. How do we do this? Well, we take this HMG-CoA, and again, and we also take some reduced equivalents from, from two NADPH molecules, but essentially we react them, catalyzed by this enzyme, to form mevalonate. Now, this is a really important step. Once we go through this step, forming this compound, now we're committed to biosynthesized cholesterol. Now this compound is committed to biosynthesized cholesterol. So therefore, this is a really important step for cholesterol biosynthesis. And that's where statins come along. The drug statins, you might've heard of them. Essentially what these drugs do is they inhibit this enzyme. If they're inhibiting this enzyme, now we can't go through this step. We can't go through this step. Now we can't create this compound. Now we can't create cholesterol. So these are very powerful drugs which inhibit this enzyme. And now we can't create this compound. Now we can't biosynthesize cholesterol molecules. However, remember cholesterol is important. So yeah, this is maybe good for cardiovascular health, but, but again, cholesterol is important. So, so it's complicating what, what, what the benefits of this. But the point is statins, these drugs inhibit this enzyme. Now we can't go through this step. Now we can't create cholesterol. But again, so, so let's say we, we did create cholesterol. We do want to create cholesterol. So we go through this step, we create mevalonate, which we know is now committed towards creating cholesterol. So how do we take this guy to biosynthesize cholesterol? 
Well, again, the first step is we essentially, we, we, with the help of these enzymes, we essentially phosphorylate this guy. Using ATP molecules, we take this mevalonate and phosphorylate it, creating this compound. Now, once we form this compound, now we can even add more ATPs and add more phosphate groups, phosphorylated even more, creating this compound. Now, once we create this compound, now essentially what we do is we go through another quick step, essentially catalyzed by this enzyme, creating this compound. So essentially we just go through a simple decarboxylation reaction catalyzed by this enzyme, where these electrons scooch down, reforming a double bond. When that happens, this bond breaks, these electrons skip over, forming a double bond here. And when that double bond is formed, this bond breaks and these electrons fall in this oxygen. And that's okay, because this is a good leaving group. But the point is we go through a decarboxylation reaction forming this compound, this five carbon compound. So now we form this five carbon compound, which essentially can isomerize. It's constantly isomerizing, forming some of this five carbon compound. But the point is we took those carbons in acetyl-CoA to biosynthesize these five carbon intermediates. And then again, sometimes this isomerizes into this guy and et cetera, but we form these five carbon intermediates. So these five carbon intermediates can be used as building blocks to biosynthesize organic compounds. We know life is built, is made up of these carbon-based organic compounds with these carbon skeletons. So we can biosynthesize these carbon compounds, these carbon uh, structures for life using these five carbon intermediates. So how exactly do we do this? Well, we take these two five carbon compounds and we react them together, forming a 10 carbon compound, which makes sense. We have two five carbon compounds, react them, forming a 10 carbon compound. And if you're interested exactly the mechanism of what's happening, it's these, this guy is this guy. And then again, this guy is this guy. But again, they react forming this 10 carbon compound. So just for simplicity, I'll draw it here for the last 10 carbons. But again, we create this 10 carbon compound. Now we take another one of these five carbon compounds, reacted with this 10 carbon compound to form a 15 carbon compound. And again, if you're interested in exactly what's going on, it looks like this here, down here. But now we form this 15 carbon compound. And we're doing this a lot. We're not just doing this once, forming one 15 carbon compound. We're doing these sets of reactions a lot. So we're creating lots of these 15 carbon compounds. So we take two of these 15 carbon compounds, react them, forming a 30 carbon compound. This 30 carbon compound known as squalene. So that's interesting. We took the two, the carbons in acetyl-CoA, those two carbon intermediates, reacted them in a way to create these five carbon intermediates, which reacted to form this 30 carbon intermediate, the squalene. So what do we do with the squalene? Well, notice this squalene compound. This squalene compound has free rotation around certain bonds. So these bonds can rotate. So as they rotate, this 30 carbon squalene ro get, gets in a, rotates these bonds and gets in a very specific conformation. And once it's in the precise conformation, this precise conformation, with the help of these, these compounds, essentially it can react with itself. It can go through intramolecular reactions we see here. So again, it gets in this very particular conformation. So now it can react with itself, where again, these electrons attack here, these electrons attack here, and et cetera. And they, they react with itself in a very specific way to create this carbon intermediate, this carbon structure, which again can go through other quick reactions forming this carbon structure. And now you might notice this closely resembles cholesterol. So we've pretty much done it. We've created this compound, which now we do some quick modifications and now we create cholesterol. So that's interesting. That's a way we took those two carbon intermediates of acetyl-CoA, went through these reactions, all these complex reactions, but now we've eventually created this compound, which we do some quick modifications, and now we've done it. Now we've created cholesterol. So again, we took carbons from acetyl-CoA, did a lot of complex reactions, but now we have cholesterol. And we know cholesterol is incredibly important. This cholesterol can be used for lots of different purposes. For example, it can act as a buffer to buffer for the fluidity of plasma membranes in our cells. Our, pl our, plasma mem our cells have plasma membranes with a very specific fluidity, and we don't want it to be too fluid or not fluid enough, so this cholesterol maintains the, the optimal fluidity. Also, this cholesterol, we can do modifications to create steroid hormones, like cortisol and aldosterone and sex hormones. Not just that, this cholesterol, we can do some quick modifications to create vitamin D. With some help from energy, from photons, from, from light, we can create vitamin D.
Also, this cholesterol is used to create bile acids, and bile acids are really important to essentially emulsify and, and absorb fat from our meals and, and our intestines. But the point is, our cells can biosynthesize cholesterol. You, you might not know that, but that's pretty interesting. We don't just get cholesterol from dietary cholesterol from our meals. Our cells biosynthesize cholesterol. And the vast majority of the cholesterol in our bloodstream comes from the cholesterol we biosynthesize.